Welcome to Module 3, Traveling Math, Section 6.1 through 6.3. In 6.1, we're going to be talking about the traveling salesman problem. It's a convenient more metaphor for many different real-life applications. We do this all the time. How can I go to all these places and back home in the most convenient way? Maybe you want to save time. Maybe you want to save money. Maybe you want to save miles. So these kinds of problems, grocery store, bank, post office, work, movies, all these kinds of decisions we make, we call them traveling salesman problem and we deal with them all the time in our life. So in this module, we're going to be talking about the best way to make those decisions. So for it to be a TSP or traveling salesman problem, we need a traveler, a person, a group, an object that's going to move and a set of sites where they're going, places or locations that they must visit, and then the cost. Now we think of cost as money, but cost in this sense is going to be what the general cost is. Maybe it's time. Maybe you're in a hurry and you don't care if you have to go miles out of the way because all the stops are on the highway. Maybe it is money. Maybe you care more about gas. Maybe it's time spent. Whatever it is, that's your cost. In each case, the problem is to find a tour of the sites that has the property being optimal. Basically, it starts and ends at the same place, visits every site once and has the least cost. And again, you make these kinds of decisions all the time in your life. So school buses. Okay, so a school bus would be the traveler. It picks up the children in the morning and drops them off at the end of the day at designated stops. Those would be the sites. And the cost in this example would be the students have to get to school on time. So since the bus repeats its route every day during the school year, finding the optimal tour is crucial. Delivering packages, UPS, and FedEx, they deal with traveling salesman problems on a daily basis. The truck is the traveler, the delivery destinations are the sites, and the travel time between any two delivery sites, or the cost, is known and can be estimated. So each day the truck must deliver to all the sites on its list, that's why sometimes you see it delivering at 8 p.m., so a tour is implied part of the requirements. Since one can assume that the driver would rather be home than out delivering packages, the optimal tour is a highly desirable goal. So errands around town, you may want to go to the grocery store, the hair salon, the bakery, post office. When gas was cheap, maybe time would be the key cost, both the cost of gas, maybe you want to look for a tour that minimizes distance rather than time. So we're not going to actually solve the following problems, but we will throughout the module. So a tour of five cities, Willie, this is the famous traveling salesman problem. Willie has customers in five cities, A, B, C, D, E, and he needs to schedule a sales trip that starts and ends at A, that's his hometown, and goes to each of the other four cities. Other than starting and ending at A, there's no restrictions. This graph shows the cost of one-way airline tickets between each pair of cities. Like most people, Willie hates to waste money. Thus, among the possibilities for a sales tour, Willie wants to find the optimal cheapest one. How? Well, we'll return to that question throughout the module. Touring the Outer Moons, and it's the year 2020, an expedition to explore the outer planetary moons in our solar system is about to be launched. It's going to visit the following places and collect rock samples, but it needs to complete this mission in the least amount of time. So they created this mapping, and then the time is what's mapped in between the edges. So again, notice in Willie's case, the cost was money, but in this case, the cost is time, and the optimal would be the shortest route. And then these are the seven locations on Mars where NASA scientists believe would be a good chance of finding evidence on the red planet. And then they've calculated these different distances. And you can take a read there. So we want the estimated distances. What is the optimal shortest tour? So that's the cost is distance. So now how do we actually find these out? So it starts with Hamilton paths and circuits. So there's a lot of vocabulary in this section, so just take lots of notes, pause the video, and repeat from there. So you can turn to page 147 for more definitions. An edge shares a common vertex. So this is the edge AF. And a path is a sequence of edges each next to each other and does not return to the original vertex. So a path, you know, is just a sequence of edges next to each other. But a circuit returns 
back to the original vertex. So you could think of a circuit as a loop. So a path doesn't have to go back, but a, a circuit does. Finding paths and circuits that include every vertex of the graph once and only once. These are Hamilton paths and circuits. So a Hamilton path, to be a Hamilton path, it needs to include each vertex of the graph once and only once. And the difference between a circuit and a path is that the circuit must return to the starting vertex. So one such um, Hamilton circuit is the path from, okay, so let's map it, A, F, B, C, G, D, E, A. So it went through every vertex once and only once, and it returned to the starting. Now there's more than one Hamilton circuit. We'll actually find out how to calculate how many, but that's an example of one circuit. Now, if the graph is a circuit, it automatically is a path. So this was the circuit we just did, but if I eliminate the return to start, it becomes a path. So the figure shows a graph that has no circuits, but it does have paths because once we get out to C, there's no way we can get back to our starting point without revisiting any vertices. So this is a circuit. We could do A, B, C, D, E, A, and the path would just not have us go back. So go ahead and pause these, see if you can find the circuits or notice if it doesn't have any. And you can pause here and take some time on that. Determining when a given graph does or does not have a circuit can be pretty easy, but it can also be hard. So let's start with how many. So we're just going to pause here. There's this symbol here. It looks like an exclamation port point, but it's actually a factorial. And what it means is when you take something factorial, you multiply it by every uh, number that comes after it. So 4 factorial is 24, 3 factorial is 6. <clears throat> we use the factorial in figuring out the Hamilton circuit. So a simple graph, no loops or multiple edges in which vertices are completely interconnected is a complete graph. Complete graphs are denoted by the symbol K sub N, and N is the number of vertices. So we've got these complete graphs here. They close, there's no loops, multiple edges. So for a complete graph, the degree of every vertex is n minus 1. The number of edges is this formula. And then here we go. This is what we're interested in. Here's the number of paths is n factorial, n meaning the number of ver vertexes or vertices. And then the number of Hamilton circuits is k sub n, n minus 1 factorial, where n is the number of vertices. So that's exactly how you can figure out how many there are. So instead of just guessing, you would say, okay, this has four vertexes or vertices. So it must have n minus one or four minus one factorial circuits. So that would be three, three factorial circuits. So that's three times two times one, which means we need to find six paths. And these are the six circuit paths. But as the number of vertices grows, the more difficult it is to calculate. So if you see that you're going to have a lot of circuits, you may not want to do it by hand. Every traveling salesman problem can be modeled by a weighted graph. And that's where we put a number with the edge. So you can, again, look back at, let's see here. There's a weighted graph because it has the numbers along the edges. And there is a weighted graph because it has the number along every edge. So every, Hamil every traveling salesman problem can be modeled by those weighted graphs. And the vertices are the sites that you're visiting. So you guys are going to be making a traveling salesman problem for your project. So you're going to build a weighted graph and the vertices will be your sites. So again, you're going to build this in your project, the sites where you're going to be visiting on your trip will be the vertices, the cost. You guys will decide what your cost is based on the project, and that'll be what you write on each edge. Now, the tour will get over next and the optimal tour soon. So the brute force algorithm, you're gonna do this in your project. 
So there are two strategies for solving the traveling salesman's problem. The exhaustive search, which is the one we're going to talk about now, the brute force algorithm, which sounds kind of just like it is, brute force, you got to do a lot of work here. And then the go cheap strategy is the nearest neighbor. So we're going to focus on the brute force. These are the steps for the brute force. So again, you're going to be doing this in your project, so you might want to pause this, write it down. First, you're going to make a list of all the possible circuits. Each of these circuits is your tour. Then for each tour, so you've got your long list, then for each one, you're going to calculate the weight. You're going to add up all the edges. And then you're going to have however many you've got there, and then you're just going to pick the best one. It's easy if there's not a lot of options. So let's take a look here. You can follow along. You can get all the work on page 182. But this is Willie's problem. To complete it with brute force, we first need to know how many circuits. So we've got how many vertices? A, B, C, D, E. So that's five. One, two, three, four, five. So remember, to find out how many circuits, it's the number of vertices minus one factorial. So that's four factorial. So that's four times three times two times one. So that's 24 circuits, which means I'm going to have a list of 24. So I have to list out all 24. And again, go to page 80, 182 to see it. But I'll show you one possible route. So that would be A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, and E back to A. And then, so that would be one of my 24 circuits. Then I calculate the weight. So the calculation would be, in this case, 185 plus 121 plus 174 plus 199 plus 133. And that's going to give me the weight for that tour. And I'm going to do that 23 more times to choose my optimal path. Now, again, go look at the table because you're going to need to make a table just like that for your project. So why would I want to do all that work? Because you are guaranteed a solution. We will always know the right answer because we'll look at all of the options. The cons, it's a ton of work. And depending on the number of vertices, you'll see that it can be really hard, if not impossible, to do. So if you have 10 vertices, that means you have three over 350,000 circuits. It's going to take you over a thousand hours to do it by hand. If you take a look here, you can see that if you, even if the computer doing it, 284 million years, brute force just isn't the best, but it will always give you an answer if you have enough time to do it. So again, it's an inefficient algorithm, meaning it can just take a really long time. But when you have a small number of circuits, it is the best option. In the next video, we're going to go over the second strategy or the go cheap strategy, the nearest neighbor algorithm.